Okay, so we're back here again with my personal bike. This is a Husqvarna Svartpelen 200. And today we're gonna do something really interesting. We're gonna install this 3D printed version of the Kuber airbox lid. And supposedly this little thin plastic will improve the sound, the engine performance, the idling rate, and the overall feel of the bike. Although I have seen it in person, I'm still a little bit skeptical if this will really improve or make my bike run better. And that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to install this and I'm going to guide you guys on how to do it and if it's worth it. Okay, so this is a 2021 Zwart Pelen 200. And what I have with me today is a local 3D printed airbox lid cover that was inspired by the Kuber air filter. So this thin plastic is made out of ABS and it fits the Husqvarna 200, 400, Vit Pelen and the Dukes and RCs. To give you a short idea of what this thing is, this replaces the stock airbox lid cover here under the seat. And you're supposed to put a filter here or a DIY cover. And as you can see, this thing has more holes in it. So in theory, this gives the engine more air. It sucks more air. But I will be the one to judge that later because I will be doing a before and after comparison of the RPMs, the idling, the speed, and even the engine sound. So we'll have a better idea if this thing really does change anything. So now, the real question is, does this really improve the bike? Well, for starters, I've actually seen this work in person. And I gotta say, the bike really sounded better. And even the RPM was more stable. But the most significant change was the power delivery at the high ends. As of today, I've only been hearing good things about this. At first, I was skeptical. But when I saw it in person, I really wanted to try for myself. And I wanted to share with you guys, of course, if this really improves something or does it even affect anything. So now let's get on with the installing part. Okay, so first step, we need to open the under seat compartment. So open it from here, twist, and then this should pop up. And then of course, you'll be greeted by the airbox lid. So there are six Allen screws that you'll need to take off before you can replace it with this. This is the 3D printed airbox lid cover with holes. So this should replace the stock airbox lid without any holes. So theoretically, this should give the engine more airflow and more room to breathe. Hence the alleged performance boost. And like I said, I'm not really sure about that yet. So we'll swap them out and then we'll see if there really are some changes. So first things first, let's remove the six Allen screw bolts and then we'll proceed with the replacement and fitment of these 3D printed airbox lid cover. So let's go. Okay, so now that we got this off, next step would be to add a foam filter or a cloth filter to our new DIY 3D printed airbox lid cover. So if you order the original one from Cooper, it should come with a foam filter attached to this. But since this is a 3D printed project, it still is technically plug and play, but you need to buy and attach your own filter or cloth fiber. Ideally, you could use those round foam filters for cars or those synthetic cloths you'd find on balaclavas or face masks. Just make sure to avoid those cloth fibers that disintegrate like eco bags that may end up their particles getting sucked up through the filter and then in the engine. So I highly suggest you buy those engine foams which I'll link down below or you can use any dry fit cloth like this one which I cut out of a balaclava. Okay, so you'll need a aftermarket filter to cover up these holes so no large particles, dust or objects will be sucked in without being filtered and go straight to your engine or your engine filter. I got this from Shopee for 150 pesos and this should work. So this is a aftermarket filter for cars and then what I'm gonna do is cut the pattern and then place on our new airbox lid. So after cutting it up, we now have this. So this should go here perfectly, there. It even looks nice with the red accent. And there are two ways to go about this. First thing is you could glue this with the airbox lid so it doesn't get sucked in towards the engine whenever you're revving it. That is very important because if this foam gets sucked into your engine, any foreign material, it will instantly damage your bike. So I highly suggest that you do this properly and that you only choose the right parts for the material. I actually plan on using this. So I cut out a small piece from a balaclava and I plan to sandwich the foam with this. 
and it adds another layer of protection for dust or maybe even water because this is hydrophobic. You really don't want water getting into your filter and getting sucked into the engine. So in theory, this dry fit cloth should sandwich the foam and the lid, creating a tight seal around the corners. Let's try this out and then I'll update you guys if this works. So let's go. Before screwing it in, make sure to screw it diagonally first. So start with this and then this. This way it aligns the airbox lid perfectly with the holes and you won't have problems aligning the other holes. So start with this and this and then proceed with the other screws. The trick here is stretch the fabric out a bit and then put the screw in. Do the same thing here on the other side. Keep in mind guys that you shouldn't tighten this too tight because it might break the ABS plastic like what I did with this one. There's one thing you have to keep in mind. After starting the engine, you should avoid revving the throttle first for around 8 to 10 minutes. This way, the computer or the ECU will have time to adjust to the new changes or until the fan kicks in and then dies off. And then after 8 to 10 minutes, you can then do an initial test run. Okay, so everything sounds normal. Everything feels normal actually, except for the audible difference in the induction noise it makes when you rev the engine. You'll definitely notice it if you've ever changed your car's engine filter before. It kind of sounds like a turbo, but it has this humming or bassy sound after revving the engine. And I can definitely see the filter move a bit because it's getting sucked in just a little bit more. So there's not much difference on the muffler or the pipe. It's more on the induction noise it makes whenever the engine tries to suck in more power. Because remember, we've already installed this. So, so basically, there's more air coming inside the engine. So it's not just the little hole under doing all the work. There are more air coming in from the top. And you can feel that slight suction whenever you're sitting on it and riding. But yeah, for now, those are the initial first few impressions after the 8 to 10 minutes idling. So in theory, more airflow means more power. At least that's how it works. But ideally, this should be equipped with a modified ECU or a piggyback because more air needs more fuel to generate more power. Another major thing that I noticed is that the idling was steady at 4 bars unlike before where it was fluctuating up and down. It seems to me that the RPM is more stable because of more air. So yeah, I don't really recommend this for everyone or maybe in the long term. But I guess we'll find that out. For now, I'll give this a test run and see if there really are some differences. there's a major difference in sound. I'm not sure if you guys can hear it properly but it's not so much on the muffler but more so in the induction noise it makes under the seat. It has this very deep sounds especially if you hit the high ends at around 5,000 to 7,000 rpms and for some reasons the sound kind of reminds me of a turbo and I really like it. Okay, so overall, there's not really much difference in power or maybe a little bit more on the high ends, especially once you hit the seven to 8,000 RPMs. But at the end of the day, you just gotta have to weigh the pros and cons. And one major con is this will probably void your warranty, especially if something goes wrong. Also, you can't really ride it in the rain or wash it anymore without covering the filter first because it will most likely get it wet. So you gotta unconsciously consider that all the time. 
And as for the pros, you definitely get a more deep and bassy sound, a more stable RPM, and maybe a tiny bit of boost at the high ends. But that's pretty much it, and I'm no expert, and I certainly don't encourage it to everyone because you might run the risk of damaging your bike due to the imbalance of mixture of air and fuel, so try this at your own risk. But for the price, it's definitely worth it. And if you guys want to order the black or the orange, message me on Instagram at Juanico Fernandez. And while you're at it, just give me a follow. Anyways, the final question. Will I keep it? Um, maybe. For now, yes. But maybe not for too long. And that's pretty much it. If you guys like this video, hit the thumbs up. And if you guys want to see more motoring content, definitely hit the subscribe button. And then I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.